Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this finds you well. Today's video is gonna show you how to go about making a palm tree leaf hut using some very simple and easy to get a hold of supplies. Some you can even get at Dollar Tree. So sit tight, as always, enjoy, and I'll see you later. Bye. For this project, you're gonna first need to get a few bunches of the berry clusters you can find at Dollar Tree. Uh, definitely grab at least three or four of these just because you wanna make sure you have enough of those leaves that you're gonna find on them. Next, you're gonna need scissors, a hot glue gun, glossy Mod Podge, you also want moss tone acrylic paint, double corrugated cardboard, water, and wooden stir sticks to get this project going. Let's begin. The first thing you want to do for this project is remove all of the leaf clusters off of the berry clusters. You can do that by just cutting off the base points and then pulling the leaves off. Then you're going to pop out those oddball little plastic things and then you're going to cut that two leaf cluster in half so you've basically freed up the leaves so you have one of each. The next thing you want to do is fold each leaf in half then using your scissors carefully cut in toward the center but not all the way through. This is going to create the fronds on the palm leaf and give you more of a palm leaf appearance when you're done. To create the framework, the first thing you're going to want to have on hand is double corrugated cardboard. And I've cut this already to be three inches high. From there, you can decide how long you want this tent hut to be. I went with four inches in this case. So you're going to cut your length and from there what you want to do is actually peel the two layers of corrugated cardboard away from each other. You will need to take some time just to clean up the pieces of paper that is between the two different layers. And essentially what this does is give this some texture underneath the leaves when you put them on that sort of nods to having logs or branches underneath to help form the hut. And when you have that all settled, what you then do is take a wooden coffee stir stick and you are going to hot glue that to all of the edges on your pieces of cardboard. This is going to give it some strength and keep that nice and firm as opposed to flopping over or rolling around on itself. I found it a lot easier to nip off any excess pieces of the wooden stir sticks after it had been glued to the cardboard using a strong pair of nippers. You could pre-measure ahead of time, but again, this I found a little bit more accurate and easier to do in this approach. Again, for structural integrity, make sure you get all exterior edges done first. You can measure the other edges using a pen and just lining things up a little bit. That will help and you can pre-cut those with your nippers again, but be sure that each exterior edge has support. Not only do you want to have the exterior edges framed, but you also want to make sure you put a piece in the center again, just to give the framework a little bit more strength. And while it should go without saying, be sure you do this to both pulled apart pieces of the corrugated cardboard so that both are reinforced and strong. When you have each piece framed out, what you're then going to do is have them tilt up against each other. What I did is using my cutting mat is I spaced the bottom edges four inches away from each other, then tilted the pieces in towards one another. Then you're going to run a line of hot glue to have them stick together. Just to be safe, I put a line on the outside, made sure I smoothed it down the nozzle, flipped it over, and then put some on the inside as well, just to really strengthen that corner edge where the two pieces are meeting. And this is how you create the base framework for your hut. At this point, it's time to place the palm leaf on. So you're gonna run a bead of glue along the edge of the very bottom, having that palm leaf hang about halfway off. Then you place another bead along the edge just about where the other leaf has ended. So you get a slight layering effect happening here. And you're gonna march it across the edge of your hut. And again, make sure you keep those palm leaves hanging about halfway off of the edge. You don't want it to run entirely down, up and down. You wanna have that drape at the bottom. And when you get over to the very edge of the other side, you will put one last leaf. And then what you're going to do is turn it over and taking your scissors, you're going to trim off the corner pieces of the palms and you actually wanna save those corner pieces. So you wanna try and keep this trim so it stays together. 
Once you trim off those little bit of corner pieces, you can then take your scissors and trim off any excess that was at the very bottom. So you get a more of a straight edge there. Now as you move on to your next row, you're gonna run another bead along, but in between the two previous palm leaves, and you're going to tack it down. And in this case, you run almost the whole length of the palm leaf. You can make sure a little bit is left at the bottom so that the tips of the palms do have some motion, but you don't have to go from tip to stern the entire time. So just move it along, as you can see here, and this is how each of the layer works. And when you get up to your top last layer, for the one side when you first do it, what you're going to do is just trim off any excess leaves you have at the top edge. However, this is the finishing side, so what you're gonna see is a different approach for finishing it. So when you get all of your palm leaves running across the top, as you see here, you wanna make sure you get as good of a coverage as you can with these leaves. And as you get towards the end, as you can see here, you may have to go back and add a little bit of extra here and there. That will happen just because some of the leaves might be a little bit more curled than others, but it's okay to add a little extra if needed. Now, since this is the final side, what you're gonna do is go back to those saved cut edges that you had from the first side, and you're gonna put them at the top between the previous leaves, as you can see here. But as you do that, what you're gonna do is start wrapping those leaves up and over the edge, curling them to the other side and securing them with hot glue. This is going to give you a finished top and sort of just finish off the piece for you so you don't have these random pieces just sticking straight up. Now you may find you're gonna to have to turn the piece around to the other side and just make sure you have everything that's a little bit bulkier and sticking up more tacked down so that the two sides flow seamlessly into each other. So this is how you add the palm leaves in a particular pattern onto the sides of the hut. Since the leaves are fabric, you are going to wanna to add a mix of Glossy Mod Podge, a moss tone acrylic paint with some water to thin it out to about the consistency of whole milk. You are going to paint this mix on top of the palm leaves. This is not only going to seal them to keep the leaves from fraying, it'll also keep the leaves from curling up and going in oddball directions as they have a little bit more time to relax. So this kind of makes sure that your leaves stay in the positions you have them placed in right now. And you wanna cover every last bit of the hut with this mixture for the exterior area of your palm leaves. When it comes to the interior of this hut, because you really don't see inside of it, I didn't bother to paint the inside. You could if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave that up to your artistic interpretation. But for now, make sure you do get that exterior taken care of with this seal. And of course, you wanna make sure this dries entirely before you actually put it to use because with having that glossy Mod Podge finish in there, uh, it will be more likely to stick to things if you're not careful, trust me on this one. I do recommend that you let this dry on, say, a piece of wax paper or parchment paper if you have it, or even just a spare piece of, say, newspaper, because that'll just make sure it's not sticking to things you don't want it to. But that's pretty much how you go about finishing up this piece. Stay tuned, I have some stills for you to check out before you go. And here you can see the end results of this piece. It is quick, it is easy to do, and it really does have a nice effect when it is on the table. You can vary the size of what you want this to be. I made it so it was large enough to essentially house our entire party. You can make this smaller, you can make it larger, you can make it higher, you can make it lower. There is some wiggle room with this, it's just adjusting your measurements. That's why I do recommend you get a few bunches of these berry bushes at Dollar Tree because you don't want to run out of leaves when it comes down to it. And also here I've made sure to include include our little crafting muse mini so you have a sense of scale. So I hope you enjoyed this. Any questions, please, as always, feel free to contact me in the comments below. You can email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you've liked this video and hit that notification bell so you know when I've uploaded my most latest activity. You can also find me on Facebook at my Facebook group. The link will be in the description below. And you can also check me out over on Instagram. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Have a great day. Take care and I'll talk to you later. Bye.
So before you go, there are just a couple more things I wanted to touch base with you about after the video was done. First thing is, is don't forget that contest is still happening. You have until March 15th. I'll put a little link up over here so you can check out the full details on that. The second thing is, and I'm sure you probably noticed the mini muse in those final stills. I'm happy to say she is completely done and all set and ready to be used for these. Uh, it's nice to have a little something to show scale to give you an idea of the size of these creations. And I'm going to put a couple stills up over here. <laughs> I'm Gonna put some stills here for you so you can get a better look at her but she is a dark swords miniature uh, she is one of the muses and if you haven't discovered dark swords yet uh, you need to get over there because dark sword does a fantastic job with sculpts and really unique looking minis i am officially addicted to them i think we have about five of them now and i have adored painting the that I've gotten a hold of so far. Uh, so again, I'll put a link for them also in the comments section and you can check out their website if you haven't come across them yet because major thumbs up to them. Take care, have a great day. I will see you later. Bye. The 3D printer is running right now. So any gnomes that you're hearing, it's that. And the thumping above, kids have off of school today. All right, so there's gonna be some extra bonus sound effects coming in. Woo! It talks to me. Oh my gosh, why can't I get this done? This is me with medicine in my brain. And a headache. This video is gonna go along with the lines of the whole ship theme that I have going on right now. A lot of it is due because of the campaign that we have. Okay. You how to get all this done and let's get going. No, that's not what I say and let's get going, no.